It's time for chips in the mail again. Let's see what came this time. <laughs> These aren't ICs. These are rotary encoders. probably familiar with rotary encoders. These are the knobs we quite often find on our electronic equipment, like my amateur radio here. I turn a knob, it smoothly moves back and forth. But it's sending signals to a microcontroller inside the radio, which keeps track of which direction I turn the knob and how far I turn it. It allows me to do, among other things, tune in onto a signal I want to copy. Here's another example of a rotary encoder on this small handheld. Eight, nine, eight, seven, six, you can select with the menu five, various options and the same three, knob will walk you up and seven, down through various choices. Five, six, seven. In contrast to the rotary encoder, this antenna tuner has a rotary switch. A rotary switch has a finite number of positions. Once you've jumped through every stop, it clicks right back to the first one. Let's take a closer look at the encoder that came in the mail. It's got a nice shaft on it, like a potentiometer. And as I turn it, it has a real nice feel to it. You can feel clicks. There's actually 20 stops for each full revolution of this shaft. On the bottom we have a series of terminals. On one side there are two terminals. These are connected to an internal push button. You see we can press the shaft in like an ordinary push button and that will close the contacts between those two terminals. On the opposite side we have three terminals that are part of the encoder. There's the A terminal, the B terminal, and in the center we have common. On the very bottom there's also these two lugs. They're simply there to add stability when you mount it on a printed circuit board. They have no electrical connection. I've wired up a little breadboard demo here to show you how the encoder works. Let's take a quick look at the wiring. The common PID here on the encoder is connected to ground on the Arduino. We're not running any program on the Arduino right now. We're just using it as a power source. I've bridged two blue LEDs across the terminal on the encoder. The long leads are connected to terminals A and B. The short leads are tied together connected to the common lead and ground. The long lead on each LED is connected to its own current limiting resistor, which is attached to the rail. The rail is split in the center, so these two halves are not connected together. The opposite ends of the current limiting resistors are connected together with this long jumper running across the center of the board. This jumper is also connected to this loose lead you see here. When I connect the loose lead to a power source on the Arduino, the LEDs light up. Watch the LEDs as I slowly turn the shaft on the encoder. The first one turns off, then the second one turns off, then the first one comes back on, and then the second comes back on. And when I turn the shaft in the opposite direction, they blink on and off in the opposite order. I may be confusing you here. Allow me to explain something. The encoder contains two internal switches that are normally open. As I turn the shaft, they close one after another. I've wired the board so that the LEDs are on when the switches are open and off when they are closed. Let me explain. You see, if I remove the encoder completely, the LEDs stay on. You'll recall that I said that the LEDs 
bridge the terminals of the encoder with the common pin in the middle. If I put a jumper into the middle here and touch it on this side, that LED goes out. I touch it over here, the second LED goes out. I'm just shorting out the LED. That's what the encoder is doing as I turn the shaft. Let's look at the encoder again. In part two of this series, we'll hook up my pet Arduino to this encoder and see if we can teach him some new tricks. So I hope you'll be there to join in the fun. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.